Hey everyone, it's Jim Chapman. In today's episode, we reference HelloFresh and a code that can get you 50% off plus your first box of HelloFresh ships completely free. We want to mention that this deal will not be active until Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. Once again, the HelloFresh deal that we have coming your way will be active on Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. And now here's today's episode of Real Life Real Crime Daily. Hey everyone and welcome to Real Life Real Crime Daily for Friday, April 21st and I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Good morning, everybody. What's up, fellas? Good morning. Good morning. You should see what's happened to my spot, folks. <laughs> I've lost like 40% of my real estate here. I'm, <laughs> I'm cramped into this little corner all because I took a little vacation while all hell was breaking loose. And I, I don't know what the penalty period is going to be, but um, – but, uh, Let's hope. Uh, let's hope I get out of purgatory soon. But the, there won't be any more vacations. We were, we were going to record re- remotely if one is a out of the office. How about that? There you, there go. you go. That's that's a plan. We we're going to shoot some video uh, today, and I want everybody to notice that we have a uh, uh, Jim has donated a uh, uh, <laughs> a, a piece of uh, I don't know what you would call it. what Americana. do you call that thing a piece Americana. of Americana Bocar. okay that's great yeah. a piece of Americana here that will allow me to during the episode keep track of how many violations Woody commits of acts that are sanctioned so currently <laughs> we are trying to roll back his use of vulgarity so each time Woody specifically the fuck e- word yeah each <laughs> that you will not hear that thankfully <laughs> uh, each time Woody. Uh, lapses in judgment and has one of those, we will place a little marker in the piece of Americana that lets me know that, uh, that Woody owes the kitty for that one. And anytime he makes the incredibly inappropriate error of referring to me or my fellow Italian brethren uh, with the, <laughs> the, the, don't do it, Woody, you're going to have an early, you have five fines in the last episode. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, make sure you guys get to see this little piece then of America. I'm, now, now, wait, 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 you, wait, 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 you're not getting off on the solution to you using vulgarity and doing the Joey B thing to me is not that you get fed. <laughs> I mean, the penalty, that's not a deterrent. The penalty is that you feel it in the pocketbook. I may choose to buy some HelloFresh, which I would with that new code, especially getting 50% off, but that doesn't come out of out of the kitty there. Well, well the code to get 50% off is R L R C 50. Yep. To get 50% off your first order. But guess what, boys, I brought y'all a little present this morning. And these are recipe cards from the box that I brought you. You don't even know about that's sitting outside that showed up on my doorstep from hello fresh yesterday. And Jim, I think you look like a sweet chili pork and cabbage stir fry guy with crispy fried onions. Yes, yeah, sounds take that good one to home me. And you and oh, and by the way, this is a meal for four people. Okay, and you, since you're Italian heritage, okay. um, I, I, you you should be the judge of this one: chicken over garlic, and what? <laughs> okay. It's it's chicken over garlic parmesan spaghetti, which looks absolutely fantastic, Woody, with a side. <laughs> Okay. You know, it's so funny, guys. Every so yesterday or uh yeah, yesterday, <laughs> why why was it that the guy going to uh the uh what was it, hire a hitman dot com or yeah, hit yeah, hitman yeah. for hire to, his name was Guido. Uh, I mean, is there <laughs> is, a, is there is there are all hitmen by definition? Well, Italians, I, I is think that, the, that I think the that's inference stereotype, uh, stereotype. Okay, and for you to have these three delicious meals in front of you and automatically assume 
that Agavino gets no, no. the Parmesan no, spaghetti, which well, I, I would have chosen. I think you would. I uh, wanted I, you to put your taste to your heritage taste test, which I'm part Sicilian. So your heritage <laughs> taste test to the challenge. Because uh, I'm telling you, I've been eating HelloFresh for years, and the, it, it, this is serious good food, y'all. But, hey, my myself, I, I guess kind of kept – a favorite for myself, which is meat loaves with creamy mushroom sauce plus green beans and garlic mashed potatoes. And look, it's easy, y'all. Like mine preps in 10 minutes, cooks in 35 minutes, and only has 740 calories per serving. And it's an easy to follow recipe card. Yep. No, it doesn't, it doesn't get any easier than this. And frankly, I mean, I've seen – uh, a number of offers over the years for uh, companies and, and hello fresh. Thank you very much for, for coming in and sponsoring the show. Uh, but I've never seen an offer of 50% off right. someone's first. So, and, I mean, it, you don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to overbuy. You don't have to underbuy and go back to the grocery store or whatever. Like mine, y'all, I mean, everything's here. It's, it's, you know, p- the potatoes, the scallions, the green beans, the garlic powder, a panko breadcrumbs, a ground beef, bud and mushrooms, beef stock concentrate, and sour cream. Oh, y'all and got it. it. It's all there. It prepares easy. Uh, the perfect uh, amount of ingredients are delivered to you, and uh, we'll come back and report on the meals that yes. we have. Uh, yes, that we have. That, that's y'all's homework. I'm hungry already. I am too. All right, all right. Let's so roll. let's get into it. Time to get into some crime. How do you crime. like that? Are we Just starting with that. a kinky sex story, a kinky uh, crime story, or are we no, saving that for later? We, we, we got to save it. We, we can't it. give them that kink, right kink, from kink the whole We don't want to return it off right after can't I do come that. come out of the blocks like that. Okay. <laughs> Had a serious situation, y'all. Go down uh, yesterday in Louisiana. Police have arrested two for first-degree murder following a standoff, and a third person has been taken in for questioning. Three men were taken into custody following a standoff with police on North Harrells Ferry Road, that's in Baton Rouge, on Wednesday afternoon, two of whom were arrested on counts of first-degree murder. Now, yeah, uh, officers have responded to a tip from the U.S. Marshal's Office that two suspects wanted for first-degree murder were located at the Wood Spring Suites Extended Stay Motel on North Harrells Ferry Road. Once the officers arrived just before 1230, the two suspects and a third person with them refused to surrender. Now, BRPD negotiated with the three men with the help of the Baton Rouge Street Team and the NAACP until about 2 p.m. when the three surrendered. Uh, No other injuries occurred, and... Uh, the NAACP president, Eugene Collins, was quoted as saying, what we've do- seen here today is that these boys will listen to us. Huh. Uh, more of us just need to get out into the street and do the work, but they'll listen to us if we try. Now, uh, the NAACP hopes to be utilized more often in the future to assist in negotiations during instances like this. The man not wanted for murder was taken in for custody and is currently under questioning. The standoff took place in an area that has seen a huge increase in violence in the past year, even as homicides have declined a little bit in Baton Rouge. The hotel uh, in this incident in particular has been involved in several issues and has been considered a hot spot for violent crime and drug overdoses. And parish leaders are now looking to stiffen oversight on motels in particular in Baton Rouge. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. That's that's where a lot of illegal activity takes place at. Yeah. Yeah. How many stars does that hotel have at this point? (laughs) That's a great question. I would say zero. Yeah, for cheap on price. They're not putting stars up anymore. They're putting bullets up. And let me tell you that. That hotel is one bullet. That area of Baton Rouge uh, 20 years ago was not. It was was up and coming. Very nice area area, of Baton Rouge. Yeah. Yeah. So, y'all, I'm going to take you to the next story, which is also out of Louisiana. And and this is important. Uh, It's horrible. And the hearts go out to to the victims and their families. The victims. Uh, plural. A woman and her unborn child were killed in a shooting in Baton Rouge. The woman was picking someone up from a party on North Carrollton Avenue. The Baton Rouge Police Department identified the victim as 36-year-old Keisha Johnson. Officers believe that Johnson was mistaken by the gunman as someone else who was shooting a gun into the sky 
near the party. Marquise Porch, Gregory Parker, and Derek Curry, who were all 19 years old, were arrested and charged with second-degree murder and first-degree feticide. Porch worked for the West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office as a full-time jail corrections deputy from June 2022 to November 2022, and then came back as a part-time officer working in jail transportation in February 2023. He was fired after the sheriff's office found out he was arrested Sunday night. Now, uh, let me tell you all why only reason he wasn't working on the street because he was still underage. You got to be 21 to get through the post academy, uh, uh, but you can be 18 and working in corrections. The horrible case, mom dead and an unborn baby dead. Wow. Yeah. Just a horrible situation there. And we brought you a story uh, in our last episode regarding an Alabama shooting at a Sweet 16 party in which yeah. 28 people were injured. 28. Four passed away. Right. and Four, four were murdered. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we didn't have a whole lot of information. The police at that time were uh, – you know, it was strange if they were saying there's there's nothing to see here. Right. Uh, there's no danger to the public. Right. And at that time, we all discussed, you know, they probably have something they're just not letting out. Usually right. that's the case. Well, three have been charged with the murder of uh, with murder in that sweet 16 party situation. Two teenagers and a 20 year old man were arrested uh, and charged with reckless murder in connection with the shooting that killed four young people at a Sweet 16 party in rural Alabama. The Alabama Law Enforcement Agency announced that the Tuskegee res- residents Tyrese Tyreich McCullough, 17, and Travis McCullough, 16, and Wilson Lamar Hill Jr., 20, of Auburn, have all been charged with four counts of reckless murder. District Attorney Mike Seagrass said the two teens would be tried as adults, an automatic requirement for anyone 16 or, uh, years or older charged with murder in Alabama, right. which I did not realize. Uh, and Sergeant Jeremy J. Barquette of the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency declined a news conference Wednesday to discuss uh, how investigators believe the shooting unfolded. He basically said, we can't go into a motive right now because it would be part of an ongoing investigation. We just can't share that. And you've seen that a lot lately. Mm-hmm. You saw it in the Idaho murder case, right. uh, police being very tight lipped, right. maybe a good strategy. Well, also because the bad guys, you know, they didn't announce who they were, but said basically no public threat, right? They knew who they were. And, but you don't want to give the bad guys a head up, heads up that you're coming. And so they can destroy any kind of evidence or, or, develop any kind of alibis before you get them. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that came out pretty late last night, right? It was like yeah. nine, at least nine, maybe 10, 10 o'clock. Cause I was looking all afternoon for something more to come out. And I was starting to think, man, maybe because it's such a rural town, there aren't cameras anywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe they don't know who these guys yeah. are. No, and, yeah. uh, thankfully uh, that appears to not be the case. So. Absolutely. Horrible. So we'll bring more information as we get in on that. You were a big Menudo fan, weren't you, Woody? I, I was always a big boy band fan, especially the Latino <laughs> influence. And you did a lot of the the dances back I in the did day. Them all. The, I, uh, I, I used to choreograph for Ricky Martin. <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> and you taught Justin Timberlake at dance Absolutely. class, didn't you? I and I and voice lessons. <laughs> Which, well, you, you did well. He uh, he knows what he's doing. Well, I actually like Justin Timberlake. Yeah, uh, this he's, is a uh, this is a story that hits very close. To home for me, and as we go through it, I'll share with you why. But a former member of the band Menudo has come out claiming that he was drugged and raped by the father of the Menendez brothers. That would be Jose Menendez. And if you remember back to the Menendez trial, the uh, the brothers claimed that the uh, the reason why they killed their parents was because of the abuse that they had taken from the father for years. And the judge ruled uh, any evidence uh, pertaining to child abuse irrelevant, and it was not admissible uh, in the case. And for years, they have been uh, battling to uh, try and appeal and try and get uh, uh, 
some of this, uh, find a way in which to bring in these uh, this evidence and find a, a judge somewhere who would be sympathetic. To just just to refresh y'all real quick, these guys, one of them snuck up behind mom when she sat on the couch and blew her head off with a shotgun. Yes. The mother's murder, the mother's name is Kitty. Her murder was particularly gruesome. One of the cops, when it happened, described her as looking like a, and pe- these are rich a Pez kids. dispenser. Yeah. This all happened way back in 1989, but has been one of those stories that has just, uh, you know, stood the test of time. I mean, it, it, it is it. continually in the news. The brothers continue to be in the news. There it's, have been a number of of series, and and part of what's going on here, I think, is that that this all ties into a new docu-series that, uh, well, that is coming out on Peacock. It's kind of like the Murdoch fascination. Also, back yeah. in 89, we didn't have all the social media, et cetera, but I watched the trial. I remember the case is rich kids, killer parents, go out by you know, a Rolex and a Porsche and whatever. Uh, uh, so now, you know, here we are. No, it, the, it still sells. Right. They were good-looking kids. Right. They, uh, you know, they had every privilege in life. The uh, the tennis court at home, right. the pool, the Beverly Hill, everything. And so, kind of like Mike's here's, house. Here's yeah, <laughs> exactly like my upbringing. Here's a little bit of a <laughs> uh, of a summation for anyone out there that might not be uh, that familiar with the case. Jose, at the time of the murder, was 45. He was a Hollywood executive and the head of RCA Records. Kitty was 47, and by the way, she was shot 15 times. Uh, So we always refer to that one headshot that led to the Pez uh, dispenser analogy, but she was shot 15 times. Lyle was 21 at the time of the killings. Eric was 18. Mm -hmm. The Privileged Brothers originally claimed that the mob was responsible for their parents' death, but later they changed their story, claiming they shot their parents in self-defense following years of sexual abuse. As I said, the judge uh, at the time did not deem any of the abuse uh, evidence admissible. And in uh, 1996, took quite a while, the brothers were convicted and sentenced to life in prison without parole. The case, as we said, has stayed in the public zeitgeist, if you will, for 30 years now. We've discussed it previously on this podcast, and I shared that uh, I considered doing a podcast back about 10 years ago with a reporter by the name of Robert Rand, who uh, is probably the foremost expert on this case, who was working for the LA Times at the time of the murders and covered uh, them uh, from start to finish uh, through the trial and then has continued to uh, cover the family and has really been responsible for uncovering a lot of the abuse evidence that has come out in the last 10 years. Well, the new piece of evidence is that a guy by the name of Roy Rosseo, who is a former member of the popular Puerto Rican boy band Menudo, has come forward claiming he was also a victim of abuse by Jose Menendez. Just to clarify how that could have come to be is – RCA Records, which Jose Menendez was uh, was running at the time, cut a deal with a promoter and agent in Puerto Rico that was behind uh, Menudo, started Menudo and recruited the kids into Menudo, wanted to tour them in the United States, cut a deal with RCA. So Jose was the guy bringing Menudo to the United States, touring with, uh, with the band through that first U.S. tour. And uh, so uh, Roseo alleges that he was drugged and raped as a teen by Jose uh, during that U.S. tour uh, the first time that they, that they came here. Um, I, have, I have heard, and this was part of the reason why I looked at doing the podcast at the time. I've heard recorded evidence of other members of the band Menudo, and certain people haven't wanted to come forward. And the timing here is a little bit suspicious on Roy coming forward because NBC announced on the Today Show Tuesday that there will be a new upcoming docuseries on Peacock, or the cock, as I like to call it, entitled Menendez and Menudo, <laughs> Boys Betrayed, 
Menendez and Menudo boys betrayed. So apparently the series on the cock is going to <laughs> focus on okay, uh, I'm, I'm putting uh, penalties some in things. On you. No, no, no. That's a you legitimate can't. nickname. People all over refer to Peacock as the cock. Come on. Uh, <laughs> get with it, you guys. <laughs> R- Roseo said, I know what he did to me in these in this house. He's now 51. Uh, in a in a clip, he points at Jose and says, that's the man that raped me. That's the pedophile. And uh, and so uh, I'm very interested to see what the new evidence is that gets presented here. I know Robert uh, Robert Rand is involved in this docu series, so uh, I may reach out to Robert to uh, to see what's going on. Hey, but, you you uh, can reach him at the cock. <laughs> no, Robert, Robert does not work at the cock. Thank you, but he, may, uh, he, might, he but, worked on the cock but for this the show. Series will be on the cock. Uh, so he worked on this series for the cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was a. Meant to be a serious story, folks. And like, hey, well, you know what? Like so many hey, other and then stories brothers, that started off some. serious on our <clears> show, <throat> it, it fell apart. And certainly, if they were bees, I feel horrible for them. But um, they didn't give them a reason to shoot their mama sixteen times or fifteen times. But go watch it on the cock. Go watch the cock, y'all, <laughs> and see. <laughs> hey, by the way. Uh, Dateline NBC is on the cock, and and Courtney Coco who who. Kill Courtney Coco was the number one downloaded episode in the world. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we were supposed Amazing. to kick their ass yesterday. We we, we got close. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't Mike's totally, real close. We didn't totally kick their uh, <laughs> kick their ass. That that whole uh, thing on the 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 cock because we actually use that in the start of Fame as a Bitch every episode. It's one really? one of the clips, and it's a reference to Matt Lauer saying he put the cock in the peacock. Oh, oh my yeah. god, god, I missed that one. <laughs> Trivia. Well. well peacock. Hey ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. It. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is... You don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says... It makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H A P P Y M A M M O T H dot com and use code R L R C. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered. A super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. In common, like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? 
Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful out of the ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans. Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Cock trivia. Remember, since we're talking about cocks. Oh, yeah. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for Kinky Crimes for Friday, April 21st. There was a couple arrested, y'all, over kinky role-playing date. A couple taking part in a kinky role-playing date was arrested after a witness reported seeing a naked woman with her mouth gagged (laughs) and hands bound while lying in the back of a car. Police in Portland, Oregon, were notified that a witness saw a naked woman in the backseat of a blue Subaru tied up with her duct tape over her mouth as the vehicle left a park, car park at a busy shopping area on April 17th. The woman who witnessed the scene and reported it says she approached the man at the wheel of Subaru, but he told her the pair was just having some fun. Yeah, man. However, she said the woman in the back of the car seemed hazy, so she called the police. <laughs> the car was tracked to Nick Harbor 31. When nine police vehicles arrived at his home, they found his girlfriend, Stephanie Pelsner, 26, in the back of the Subaru, still naked and tied up. Right Pelsner confirmed the couple was taking part in a consensual role-playing as a part of a date, but the pair was still fined for disorderly conduct. How are you going to okay. find wait, 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 wait. This so, man's just trying to have some all, fun. All we hear about is how shorthanded all of these police departments right. are all over <laughs> yeah. the country, yeah. yet oh, nine yeah. units they call each yeah, other. Yeah. 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 Nine, nine yeah. units were able we to respond had, to we this? We had a code word. If I got out on something that, that was crazy, everybody had to come to see it. I, I said the code word in the microphone that every available unit, oh, with me, they, they were dropping calls oh, to come God. see because you knew it was the greatest show That's on earth. Right. Right. Yes, yeah, so nine cut in and defund what, what the town, police. What town is it? It's Portland, Oregon. That's, Defund the police. Well, not land, in Portland. They, they probably have 11 total units left. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, because they're already gone. You know? 88% of the Portland police showed the, up uh, for all, the show. And they all have oh seen God. Stephanie Pelsner in her birthday suit tied up. And that is Kinky Crimes. Love, love, love that segment. That was very good. Love that one. (laughs) Okay, here's a kind of a scary story, guys. Um, And uh, uh, technology in particular, AI has been in the news a bunch. Artificial intelligence has been in the Uh, the news a bunch. I got to interrupt you. You know what menudo means? (laughs) For real. No, I don't. It's the world. It means the world? The world. Thank you for that. I'm going to tell you all that. Right. I appreciate that. That's Sorry. a new segment. Sorry. This, Woody, this Woody, Woody interruption brought to you by HelloFresh. I didn't Google that, y'all. Okay. Sorry. So let me start that again. HelloFresh. Artificial, artificial intelligence has been in the news lately, and we're going to talk about some of the ways it's been in the news. But a particularly scary story comes out of the state of Arizona where uh, – AI enabled a million dollar kidnapping hoax. Yeah, this is crazy. So here's how this thing went down. A mom in Arizona is sending a warning after her daughter's voice was cloned in a $1 million kidnapping scheme. So Jennifer DiStefano's 15 year old daughter, Brianna, was on a ski vacation when DiStefano received a call from an unknown number. The only reason she answered was because. Her daughter was out of town and she thought maybe something happened to her. And uh, after picking up 
DiStefano said she heard, quote, my, da- my daughter's voice crying and sobbing, saying things like, Mom, and uh, 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 these bad men have me, help me, help me. She told NBC 15 in Phoenix that a man then got on the phone and told her, quote, put your head back and lay down, which a terrified DiStefano did. The man then gets on the phone and says, listen, here, I've got your daughter. This is how it's going to go down. You call the police. You call anybody. I'm going to pop her so full of drugs. I'm going to have my way with her, and I'm going to drop her off in Mexico. DiStefano said uh, at that moment, she just started shaking. And in the uh, in the background, she keeps hearing uh, what she believes is her daughter yelling, help me, mom, please help me, help me, and crying. According to NBC 15, the – uh, kidnapper demanded a million dollars and then, uh, and this should have been a hint to the mom, immediately lowered his price tag to $50,000 after T. Stefano told her she didn't have that kind of money. Maybe, so yeah. that's probably not your hardcore kidnapper going to negotiate right. right down to $50,000. But she kept the guy on the phone, which was pretty smart of her, while a friend of hers who was with her at the time called the police and uh, another friend got Di Stefano's husband on the phone. And he was able to make some calls and get in touch with Brianna uh, while all this was happening. So they were able to make sure that she was actually safe. So it, uh, uh, so Di Stefano hung up the phone and, uh, you know, she truly believed up until that moment that it was her daughter on the phone instead of an AI platform that was replicating her daughter's voice. She said it was completely her voice. It was her inflection. It was the way she would have cried. I never for one second doubted that it was her. That's the freaky part of what really got to me. Um, The founder of Way, which is a a group that educates youth on technology on its website, claims that replicating someone's voice is a lot easier than most people think. Most people today have some form of online identity and have probably uh, spoken in some way that's been recorded. So I Whatever you post, where you post it, if you're posting video and we're, your voice is on there, uh, I said, yeah, it's especially easy if you happen to do a podcast. Right. So, you know, as we move forward more into the future, um, you know, we, we do have these AI generators or synthetic audio. It's all pretty, uh, it's all pretty darn spooky. Imagine a simulated uh, life simulated crime series with the podcast uh, hosted by a silicon version of Woody Overton. Yeah. So on Monday and Tuesday of this week, related to this, uh, which I don't care what side of the uh, aisle you're on, this is a very non political uh, interview. There is an interview that Tucker Carlson conducted with Elon Musk, and Elon Musk is absolutely an expert on this technology beyond just being brilliant. He was uh, one of the founders of the open AI project and discusses that at length during this, uh, during this interview. But what really struck me was that, you know, Musk is one of the, uh, the tech geniuses who are pushing for a time out here or pushing for, uh, for, uh, for us to stop any further development of AI until we can get a better handle as a country, as uh, uh, as a planet, on the threats that are posed versus the benefits that, that could come from where uh, AI development is right now. Here's a short clip for that interview, which I think puts in good perspective uh, the, the stakes uh, that are at play here. And, uh, and this is Musk, and it's not hyperbole. This is his position. AI is more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b- bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. Pretty frightening stuff, Jim, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is. And I actually watched this entire interview uh, with Elon Musk, and Elon Musk has been someone who has been a big proponent of slowing down AI for a while. But I have something. It was interesting, the timing of all of this, because I have uh, a, a good perspective on the other side of AI. And uh, just to give you the story on that, on my show, Local Leaders of the Podcast, my most recent guest, actually, it, it hasn't even aired yet this episode. It'd probably be next week. But it was a company by the name of Valen 
uh, surveillance and security. They came on my show and they have so much technology now with cameras. So I'm going to give you an example of a good side of AI and something we talked about, which was school shootings. Mm -hmm. AI is so advanced now that if a vehicle was to pull up to a school and they had this, these certain types of cameras and a person got out and they went in the school, it's not going to alert anybody. But if someone pulls in that parking lot and they pull out an AK-47 or a gun or anything, that camera can determine that that is a gun shape or an AK-47 shape or it's something not normal. It right. learns those habits, and it will send an alert not only to the school but to the police. Now, wow. not only can it do that, if, if, uh, if a, there's a fight inside of the school, two kids get in a fight, it can e actually determine what roughhousing is and what fighting is, and it will hmm. send an alert to the principal – when a fight breaks out, it can even determine if you're smoking a cigarette or not. Really? Just, just, it just knows. That's how advanced AI is. It can, it can differentiate. Elon Musk touts a lot that, uh, you know, his biggest concern is computers will supersede human beings on, or AI will on, uh, ad advancement to a level that they kind of take over. That's a very, very extreme side of that. Um, but not all AI is bad. Uh, I, I know right now the big talk is they have apps out that you can actually download that you can say, hey, write me a book report on Robert E. Lee. Right. And it'll write a book report that will never be – it won't be replicated twice anywhere. Yeah, it's just it your time. individual book report, and there's no way to differentiate. And it's immediate, and it's a lot better than you yeah. write on your, it, on your it's own. It's five but, seconds, but yeah. The, the scary part of the opposite side of uh, what it sounds like Valen is doing is – the ability to distinguish between what is real and what is fake. The scariest part of the entire thing to me um, is Google is the most powerful company on planet Earth. They are. And they've got three quarters of the AI talent in the globe, across the globe, works for Google. Musk shares a story of back years ago when he was very close with Larry Page, one of the founders of Google, and that they got into a discussion about AI where Page, in a adversarial way, accused Musk of being a speciesist. Hmm. In other words, and the argument ensued from there where Google's approach is we're just building the greatest intelligent, artificial intelligence we can, and we're not letting anything get in the way of that, like caring about the impact on people. And Musk is Musk said at that point, I admitted wholeheartedly to being a specious, caring about humanity and the human species. And that's when he started the open AI project, which was uh, and and continues and actually at this point is probably at least even with, if not ahead of Google's work in this area where they are trying to keep all of that work and all of that development open to, uh, to prevent it from being manipulated in a number of nefarious ways that it, that it could be manipulated. So it, okay. really scary stuff. I'd recommend people watch that I, interview. Definitely I, pay attention to it. I want to say this. Y'all kind of lost me a long time ago because I was thinking, um, if I was a young Woody Overton had multiple girlfriends at one time and this technology had been available and I got busted, like leaving a voicemail on a one girl found out. Uh, you could just blame, it on, just AI. blame it on that. AI. That's right. That's it. So and then she'd get pissed off and call you a speeches. Is it speeches? <laughs> speeches is another word for asshole. Uh, no, someone that cares about <laughs> someone that cares about people. Would yeah. Be. Uh, so uh, once again, folks, Woody has found the silver lining in the cloud. Uh, defense attorneys <laughs> everywhere take <laughs> note. Me, I'm a, I'm a one woman man, uh, a polygraphist, not a polygamist. Oh, you're just speaking for others uh, who uh, might uh, be but, in that uh, kind uh, of and, jam. And, uh, yeah, they might be. <laughs> they stole they, what? They stole what? That's right, y'all. It's time for another. They stole what? 
And in this case, y'all are not going to believe this, but oh, God, yeah. in 1997, they had a great Beanie Baby heist. Oh, yeah. That's right. Y'all remember yeah, Beanie I, Babies? I remember those, Super yeah. popular back in those days. Well, in the 90s, they were at their heyday, and the colorful stuffed animals were the subject of countless robberies at that point. People uh, believed rumors that they could pay off their student loans with by selling Beanie Babies on the secondhand market. Mm-hmm. And in 1997, a 77-year-old man, Ben Perry of Glendale Heights, Illinois, thought he had struck gold until he was caught with 1,247 beanies that were thought to be part of a lot of 60,000 that went missing from the manufacturer, which was Thai, that was right, the company. Mm, little right, tags right, right. Or red, red and white tags. Right. Their warehouse. Now, that haul was estimated at over $300,000. But when Perry went to court, he was found not guilty because there was no proof he knowingly possessed the stolen property. And for his part, he claimed he bought them all at a flea market. Uh. But 77 years old. Three hundred thousand dollars worth of Beanie Babies, amazing! They stole right, what? right. Well, they, well, stole, what? they stole what? Well, 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 coming right out of that, I mean, the next thing that became uh, super popular was the Teddy Ruxpin, and yeah. you know, talking about AI, I mean, that was really the first big project where that thing they used ai it, it was became, pretty freaky it became a sentient uh, uh the guy actually d- ended up doing movies the I, teddy ruxpin that they I, that they originally tested the I, ai on. i don't I, know if you guys have seen those movies i've been benching the sopranos and they they gave him a little bass that you walk by and the bass oh yeah sang <laughs> sing a song so yeah that's kind of yeah everybody had one of those I, I, best invention billy ever. the bass it's or something an like attempt that. at a joke you guys don't oh i get it all right what, that, you don't know what movie i'm talking about oh no I, no actually i don't the Teddy Ruxpin. Actually, I wasn't the paying Teddy attention. Ruxpin, <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin became Ted. <laughs> they stole Ted. what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah with uh, Wahlberg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. They stole what? <laughs> what? I missed it. <laughs> hey, right, y'all, let me take you, you to a lot Oregon. Of Mike in this episode. And we were talking about Portland, Oregon, and the kinky sex segment, uh, or kinky crimes. But <laughs> Oregon, some people in Oregon have received a license to sell magic mushrooms okay so oregon's experiment with legalized hey let me say this real quick you 422 boys out there and you know who you are you know what i'm about to tell you about oregon's experiment with legalized magic mushrooms took step closer to reality as the first facilitators who will accompany clients as they experience the drug received their state license so voters voters y'all approved the regulated use of psilocybin in 22, no, I'm sorry, in, in a 2020 ballot measure and, and anticipation has been building over the past two and a half years for the day. Expected to come later this year when people can gain access to the drug that studies indicate has therapeutic value. Hundreds of people have invested thousands of dollars a piece in this budding industry and some worry that the rollout is proceeding too slowly. But to date, no service centers where this is where customers would access the drug in controlled, calm environments with music, eye mask, and mats have been licensed, nor has any laboratory where the products must be tested for potency. So, y'all, the psilocybin may come in the form of whole dried mushrooms, ground homogenous. <laughs> homogenized fungi extras and other products mm. the only one i know about it, it comes Tastes in like white chicken. uh what it's chocolate covered white strawberry don't drop it i'm putting it, one in there that's just for obliteration of the been, english language hey, you, get you, a, gonna, you get a he, sanction he just gave me a sanction so give me two i'm saying fuck all right, <laughs> all right. so now i mean sanctioned twice the, so anyway y'all some people are uh you know, paid a lot of money to get these licenses. Like one check paid ten thousand dollars for um, the license, and twenty five thousand dollars are life savings on on, on the building and utilities and all this other crap. Um, and but, but about one hundred people recently completed the seventy nine hundred dollars six month course 
at a retreat near Portland to learn how to become facilitators and earn a certificate, and that enables them to take a test administered by the health authority to receive their licenses. Um, Stay tuned on that. What the hell is going on in the state of Oregon? I don't know. Have anybody going to admit it? Anybody partaken? Swim will tell you all about laughing till they piss their pants uh, on, on, on shrooms, but I, the swim being someone who isn't me. I know <laughs> okay. nothing about that. Four, okay. tw- four 22 boys. A, a younger version <laughs> of me may, might have partaken. Yeah. And I mean, there's absolutely no way that you can function <laughs> no, yeah. on that. I yeah. mean, you, you, uh, you actually need to be somewhere really safe. Listen, I had, with, I had a buddy tell me, uh, recently that they did some of this and they drove for like four hours and then they realized they never left the garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, they were like funny. a long road trip. So we were trip. at, we were at Mardi Gras one year yeah. and a group of us and from uh, school and we, we did them. And one of my buddies became convinced he was like Billy Jack. I mean, he had yeah. the bandana tied and he, for some reason, believed the seven-year-old, eight-year-old kid that was standing near us was reading his mind. Yeah. Well, none of us knew anything was going on. He walks over. He grabs the kid. He picks him up over his head, and he throws him in a bush. Wow. And we end up in this big battle right. trying to explain to his parents, who know all of us are Hiring severely me. screwed right. up. This is I, – I, I don't know – what the hell they're doing up there? I mean, you can't make either. that legal. I don't know either. The, uh, um, yeah, that, and that's it. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble meal kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but I'm going to tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, siapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. All the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G O B B L E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site. So don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth. Like you never had. Yeah. Go on that magic mushroom trip. At least you know that you're not picking out cow shit after rains in the pasture because there's like eight thousand different kinds of mushrooms that are poisonous. So at least I won't die from it. Here it goes. Well, folks, after a series of meetings uh, of the Real Life Real Crime Daily Brass, it was decided that Mike will now read the dumb criminal segment each time. So, and, so Woody um, graduated at Kinky Crime. I get the Italian meals and the dumb criminal segment. So <laughs> the dumb criminal segment for today, Christopher Wallace is a 24-year-old from Maine. He was on the run from police after allegedly stealing cooking equipment. Having successfully evaded police for weeks, he started to get a little bit cocky, started posting to Snapchat that he was at home Hiding from the police. (laughs) Well, come on. Uh, Upon seeing this, a couple of his followers called, guess who? The police. The police, (laughs) who then went to search his home. 
And for, unfortunately, despite the tip off, police had no luck finding him and called the search off. Mm. That's when Christopher posted again, saying police were in his house and he was hiding oh in a cabinet. <laughs> Oh, my God. The police, the police were alerted again and searched the cabinets to find pots, pans, and a pair of feet. The <laughs> feet were attached to Christopher, and he was placed under arrest. Wow. That would be one of the thousand poor uses of social media. <laughs> yes, right? <laughs> that is, and that is one that's truly dumb criminal. Truly dumb criminal. That is indeed a dumb criminal. Love that. All right. Back to some more serious stuff. Uh, And this has been really making a lot of news the last uh, 24 hours in particular. Two Texas cheerleaders have been shot in a parking lot after mistakenly trying to enter the wrong car. Now, two all-star cheerleaders are recovering from being shot in that parking lot. Uh, Heather Roth and Peyton Washington were returning home from cheer practice at Woodlands Elite Cheer Company in Oak Ridge, Texas, with two friends when the incident happened. Y'all listen to this. Heather Roth stated the incident happened after she got out of her friend's car and approached a vehicle that looked similar to hers, parked in the parking lot and tried to open the door. When it didn't open, she looked in. She realized there was a man sitting there in the passenger seat. Uh, She... Panicked, was probably a little embarrassed, turned around and returned to her friend's car, which the man later approached. Now, Roth said she rolled down her window. She was going to apologize to the man for mistakenly trying to get in his car. He pulls out a gun and he just begins blasting. That's crazy. Uh, Peyton Washington was later airlifted to the hospital following the incident and is currently being treated in a nearby ICU. Another member of the party was also treated at the scene, but has now returned home. The man who fired the shots was 25-year-old Pedro Tello Rodriguez, and he was taken into custody uh, early Tuesday. Crazy. So just a horrible uh, honestly, awful situation. If there was ever, if there was ever intent, and in that it was in what? that case, right? Probably uh, he, he thought he was disrespected or someone like that's some gang shit. Unbelievable. And and apparently, one of those, uh, you know, some of these uh, national competitions are very intense, particularly right. state of Texas. That group of girls were part of an elite team, and right. the the one uh, that had the the worst injuries. Uh, is an all American and yeah. was expected to Going probably to win uh, the, uh, the championship, which is actually happening this week. So it's, it's uh, not a, not a it's, Tanya uh, Harden case. And it's, the bizarre it's, thing about this, look, this isn't um, two guys approaching car, trying to open it and they look kind of right, rough right. and you're sitting in the, it, yeah. this is two cheerleaders. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, you feel no threat, right? Once, right. And especially they're returning to their vehicle. Well, uh, athletes, huh? I'm sure. I'm a hundred percent sure. There's more information going to come out on this, but what a what a tragic. I'd be very surprised. Situation. If, Thank uh, God they're alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For That's sure, a, a horrible. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you another story out of Texas, which, which oh, we brought you ever almost done? here first on RRC Daily oh, already, which done? is. The Texas serial killer fears rise as the late deaths climb to four. A fourth person has been found dead in Austin Lake amid public fears over a potential serial killer. Although police have said they have not seen evidence of foul play in any of the cases. I'm calling bullshit on that one. And I called it last week. Yeah, you you, you called it. it. uh, So Austin police identified the latest victim Monday Afternoon, and well, why they call him a victim? There's no evidence foul play. But the latest victim Monday afternoon is John Christopher Hayes Clark, 30. He was pronounced dead at the scene. While the investigation is still in the early stages, we do not suspect foul play was involved based on the information we have at this time, police said. The investigation remains ongoing, and we have no further information to provide. Uh, multiple 911 callers report an unresponsive person in the water around 1.20 p.m., Saturday. Police said they had not seen evidence of foul play in the prior incidents either. Although these cases are still under investigation, the evidence is being analyzed at this time. There is no evidence in any case. You know what? I'm going to quit reading this to y'all and just tell you that um, it's bullshit. They're, just like we talked about earlier, they don't want to give away 
where they're coming from. They want to give the bad guy or potential bad guy uh, um, any idea of how they're going to come at him. So, but police found Jason John 30 dead in Lady Bird Lake in February, a week after he was last seen on Rainy Street. We told you all about that last time, which has a popular row of bars near the water. Another man who was not identified was found dead on March 5th, and Jonathan Honey, 33, was found on April 1st, a day after he was last seen at a food truck on Rainy Street. All of them last seen on Rainy none, Street. Right, and none of the autopsy reports are available to the public. That's a big flag. Uh, one common theme of the drownings in Austin this year is the combination of alcohol and easy access to Lady Bird Lake, which we told you all about. Going back to it again, the uh, no such thing as a coincidence in these many deaths. I'm telling you from experience, they they're holding they're playing the cards close to the vest. And one thing they want to do is cause two things. One is public panic. Two, they want they do not want to tip off this asshole that they're coming for. Yeah. Woody, yeah. if you were thinking about a profile, of, do we have the age of all the? I know one we didn't. Okay. One was thirty, right? Well, it's, it's thirty, thirty-three, uh, and the most recent guy was thirty. It, um, so the, all okay. around so the same here's, here's from the, the same that, area, all around the same right, age, right, all the, men, and, and all in a vulnerable position of, uh, by raining drunk uh, under the influence. Here's the other deal: the 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 air the air to the, that lake, y'all, is you talked about driving up to. It's not uh, really that away in Austin. I spend a lot of time there. The um, the areas around that lake close at 10 p.m. and there people are urged not to go in and and, and around that lake at nighttime. Well, what happens? Everybody got here because two people effed. I didn't say it, Mike, so you can't put the thing <laughs> in. So you, you get you, somebody. It's picking up somebody on Rainy Street. They're under the influence. They slip down into the shadows uh, by the lake to get a little boom, boom, on. Joey, I'm just teasing. They, they go down there to do it, and, and what better place to kill someone than when it's dark and you have easy access and exit. Yeah. So, yeah. and you put the body in the water, make it look like drownings, and evidence goes away. Now, I was just in Austin at New Year's. Yeah. And I couldn't believe how uh, how low the water level was in Lake Travis. I mean, yeah, it was saw that way year. the hell down. I, I wonder if uh, – because so all the lakes must be. I don't know if they've – because that started in February, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know if somehow that yeah. has any kind of – because I went on a hike around the lake, mm. and I was at a point hiking in – portions of it that would have been underwater right, right. normally. And I was still 20 feet above right, the water. Right. After all the boat docks are dry and everything else yeah. there. But this is different. Like this is rainy. This is close to sixth street uh, downtown. So but let me tell you this. Y'all may not know this. Austin's uh, had only one other serial killer in. Uh, it, they were named the Servant Girl Annihilator, and is believed to be killed eight women between December of 1884 and December of 1885. No one was ever caught. Yeah, and and of course with serial killers, the, once they get a name, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, that's the media's way of of really getting it out there and getting drumming up people's interest. But we're uh, something tells me we're going to be, this is going to be a continuing uh, report yeah, it as it goes along. And, and that and they have to go back and review all the other people, people that allegedly drown and yeah. stuff. But let me, uh, before you change it real quick, shout out to Austin PD. I had a lot of good friends there. Do you know that they're one of the highest paid police departments in the United States of America? No. They recruit the best of the best. And I, I, and it I have a lifer who who applied for the Louisiana State Police. I'm not going to say his name. and But he um, also applied to Austin because it, it's a prestigious deal, and it, he's a great kid. I us say kid, and he's in his mid-20s. And um, he is now working for Austin PD. Wow. Also. So wow. I, they'll get Interesting. him. They'll get him. Well, we keep you updated. Today in 
true crime, y'all. Today in true crime history, and we got some good ones today. I thought they were you interesting. Always, you always have good ones. Mike will remember this one well because he's probably related to this gentleman. But in 1986, <laughs> can't wait for this. Geraldo Rivera. Opened, <laughs> oh no, no, no! You're not related to Geraldo. I'm not I saying think that. He's Latina. Opened Al Capone's vault. Yeah, he's oh, probably I related that. to I Capone. Yeah, I would have found like a coke bottle or something. That was live on TV. Live on TV. That Nothing was inside the vault. It was a huge spectacle, and you would have thought it would have ruined Geraldo Rivera. Bear's career, but it, it, it didn't. Right. I mean, he's a good, you know, he's a he's all right. No, it ruined his career. Yeah, he, <laughs> his career was already ruined. <laughs> her all no. He's like the Jerry Springer. Of, yeah. Of news. Well, he's like 80 and he's still going. Yeah, he's he is. He's impressive. Strong. Uh, so that was in 1986 and 1995. And of course, on our last episode, we discussed this as well. But Timothy McVeigh was arrested yes. for the Oklahoma City yeah. bombing. On our last episode, the it was the day it occurred. So just a few days in between the day it occurred and when Timothy McVeigh was arrested. And in 2003, Amanda Berry disappeared right before her 17th birthday. She had been kidnapped by Ariel Castro and was able to escape from his home I remember that. in 2013. Yeah, so, that. yeah, 10 years. Crazy. 10 years yeah. before she escaped. So Any final thoughts? Yeah, I want to tally this today because I didn't say fuck. I believe it was two. No, the the three now. Four. He's tearing off another piece. That's a there. lot of Hello Fresh. <laughs> Jim, you also get one for the trying to equate me with Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Put it in the Every kitty. bit as insulting uh, as hey, anything Woody threw. Hello out. Fresh delivered to your door. Code yeah, RLRC. 50. 50. 50%, 50 off. Percent off. Very good. It's cheaper than anything else y'all can do. Uh, hey, we're going to post a shit ton of videos and everything else. Uh, uh, and... Yeah, I, I, I'm a foodie. I'm a I'm a food snob, if you will. I love this shit. Yeah, yeah, me too. And uh, and so thank you, Hello Fresh. And until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Everton, and I'm Mike Agavino, your host of Real Life Real Crime Daily. Peace. Show business. Hey, one more reminder: the Hello Fresh deal we referenced in this podcast will become active. Saturday, April 22nd, 2023. Thanks for listening. Early holiday savings have arrived at Tanger Outlets. Discover the best gifts from your favorite brands, perfect for everyone on your list. And stack your savings with up to 70% off, plus an extra 15 to 25% off only during Tanger Style. Save at Polo Ralph Lauren, Old Navy Outlet, Under Armour, Skechers, J. Crew Factory, and more. Hurry in. These early holiday deals last through November 24th. Tanger Outlets. More savings, more cheer.